Hello and welcome to another exciting Blender tutorial. I'm Chris Bailey and we're gonna be kicking off a new series with this episode, making a really cool space station in an asteroid. This is also a great chance to talk about the Patreon. If you haven't already, go check it out. It's a great way to support what I'm doing. And if you really like to see tutorials like this, go jump on over there for me. I really appreciate it. If you join at the second tier, you'll get this project file. But if you join just at the first tier, you'll get unlock hours and hours and hours of extra content that I've recorded and posted up just for Patreon and YouTube supporters. So if you're interested in seeing all the live streams, all the uncut material and bonus episodes from other tutorial series, that's the place to find it. So go check it out. There's a ton of great stuff here. And every project file that I make for this series is also gonna go up on Patreon. What I do is every month I put new project files in the monthly folder. So if you join now, you'll get this month's folder and last month's folder. And every month that you stay joined to the second tier, you get a new folder with new project files. So it's a great chance to just build an awesome collection of really cool random sci-fi Blender projects and a lot of other stuff too. I throw everything at it. So hope you enjoy that. Hope you check it out. All right, so the plan with this is to do a couple of episodes, putting together a really cool shot. I'm gonna make a, a kind of a, a space station that's inside of an asteroid floating out in the edge of the galaxy. It's sort of like a last stop petrol station for space freighters and stuff. And like, you know, neon signs kind of hanging off the side of this thing and, you know, weird stuff and all kinds of ships like coming in and docking and going in. So it's going to be kind of involved. We're going to do some cool stuff. So we've got our basic scene up. I'm going to get rid of everything. We're just going to hit A to select all and X to delete. And then like an absolute maniac, I'm going to shift A and create a brand new camera, um, even though I just deleted one. I'm going to hit zero on my number keypad to jump into my camera. And then I want to lock my camera to view. Uh, view. So I'm going to come here to view and I'll tick lock camera to view. One thing I love to do is to right click this and to add it to quick favorites. And when you do that, then when you hit Q anywhere in the viewport, you get this little pop up and we get to lock the camera to view. So I want to zoom out and just kind of uh, get a basic In fact, I'm going to look straight down. We're going to do that trick that we did in Epic Space Battles where our movement is going to be really clean along just like one axis. So it just makes it simpler for us to animate. So what I want to do with that is uh, I'm going to take my, my Y rotation, I'm zero it out. I'm going to take my Z and pop it straight to 90. And I'll keep X doesn't matter as much because it's looking up and down. Um, and I'll set us right on the Y, zero at the Y, and X will be our forward and backward motion. And Z is just up and down, so we don't have to worry about that yet either. Now, I also want to give this the cinematic aspect ratio. So I'm going to come over here to the X resolution. I'm going to type in 1080, which is the, uh, the height of my frame. But I want to get a width that's really long. So I'm going to multiply this by 2.35. Now, 235, that's the cinema ratio, right, for movies. So I'm going to go for that. Hit enter, bam, we've made a movie. That joke never gets old. All right, let's go to our viewport display, turn up passport two. Now we're not seeing anything outside of our camera and I'm gonna untick lock camera to view. That way I can zoom in a bit just to get a nicer, bigger view here, even though we're gonna jump straight out of this camera soon anyways, but. All right, great. Um, now I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to lift my view up a little bit and bring our camera down so we're a bit closer to the grid and then we're going to get started. All right, so we want to make a big asteroid. Um, what makes the most sense, of course, is to start off with an isosphere. So let's do that. And I'm going to scale it up and just kind of get this thing going. So anyways, this is pretty massive now. So let me unlock my camera to view. You can see just the size of our camera, maybe even a bit bigger. I'm going to go ahead and go to my modifiers tab and I'm going to add in a modifier. I'm going to grab, I'm going to go for a subdivision surface first. This will subdivide our mesh, give us a lot more geometry. So I can turn this up maybe to two. Let's go all the way to three even. And then I'll come here and I'm going to grab a displacement modifier. Now I'm going to create a texture here. This is what this tab represents. If I click new, it's going to create a new texture. I can call this whatever I want. And then what I want to do is I can click this button. This will take me to the texture. It's like a shortcut. I mean, you can just click here as well. It's the same thing. See, just pop me down there. And automatically it sets us up with image, which I don't want. I don't want to have an image. I want to actually use some generated noise. So something that's uh, created by Blender. So an image that's black and white. That's like um, a noise pattern of some kind. So I'm going to go with clouds. I think will look pretty good. So you see, I get this nice noise pattern. And now Blender's using that noise pattern to determine how far it should push the geometry out or how far in it should push it, you know, how it should sculpt this the shape. Now we can change the size so we can get like larger or smaller valleys, hills and valleys. 
So I'll just kind of play with this a little bit. We can also increase the depth, which will increase the complexity of that noise. You can see that kind of happening there on my shape a little bit. I'm gonna go that crazy. I want this to kind of retain some sense of our being rock. So I'll come like that. I think this, I think this will work. This should work pretty good. I'm gonna right click and shade smooth. That will change the shading method so that instead of uh, taking every face and shading them just as they are, it's gonna kind of average them all out as the light hits it. Let's say you get this nice rounded look. Pop out of my camera and just have a look at the shape that that noise gave us. It's pretty cool. We could push it a little bit. We could um, take the strength up. That'll start to kind of give us some weird bulges like this. Which might be kind of cool. Now let's just try sculpting this out a little bit. So I'm going to shift D to duplicate. Rotate Z, grab Y. And I'm just going to put a couple of these together and shift D, duplicate again. We're going to create a rock material, an asteroid material, put on this. In fact, we're going to go ahead and just, just create a mood for the scene. Like we're just going to go, let's just dive all the way into this, like create some space and everything. So I'm going to, we're re-rendering this in Eevee. So let's go ahead and turn on ambient occlusion, bloom, and screen space reflections in the render tab. It's something I do every time I set up anything. That's all we need to worry about at this point. Uh, let's go to our world tab and let's uh, split our view over here. And we're going to switch to rendered view. So we can actually look at this as rendered. We're not going to see anything because we don't have any lights. And I'm going to change this over to my shader editor. Now I'm going to hit N to hide the shelf and I'll click uh, actually, we'll come up here to objects. So right now, this mode, we're in the mode where we're going to place materials on objects. So if you watch over here, I can click new and you'll see we get a material appear here. So I can click new, it creates a new material. Likewise, if you come over here, you can just click in here and watch here. New, boom, see it? Same way, same way of doing it. Um, but we're not going to do this right yet. We're just going to switch from object mode to world mode. So we're going to be doing a shader for the world. That's the, the big giant invisible sphere that surrounds our our space and right now it's just the color gray you can change that to whatever you want but um let's make it black we're going to write down and i'm going to turn off my grid and my controls and everything now let's come over here and grab a noise texture and let's crank the scale up to 600 and then we're going to come over here grab a color ramp node and we're going to drop it here and we're going to take the factor and we'll plug it into the factor there and we'll take the color and plug it into the color we'll get a giant blowout and then we're going to take this black pip and drag it in closer and closer closer and closer until it starts to cut out a bunch of stuff and then we get stars we could turn the strength up maybe to 10 and then maybe pull this a little bit uh looks pretty good somewhere in there is going to work nice i think um Looks really good. We got lots of stars. Now let's think about like our light source. We're gonna have lights from this thing. We might want a planet in the shot. I don't know. We have some cool stuff. Let's just create a sun lamp to start with. So I'm gonna go Shift A, Light, Sunlight, and we'll just position this somewhere. Um, maybe just off to the side, like this, uh, like that. Um, and I'm gonna give it any color yet because I want to kind of get the colors right in this and then we'll kind of sculpt things with color later um, but let's go ahead as well we're gonna add a little bit of volume into this right at the start so just a bit of atmosphere and what i find works really well with this in space is that if you do this you get really nice um kind of glows and stuff around the light um, we can we can shape it a bit so let's come over here and go volume scatter node this is one of my favorite nodes and we're going to plug it into the volume input now volume is just like you know, it's it's a volume like smoke, right? So if we take the density down, you're going to start to see stuff appear. There it is. It's just, you know, it looks gross. But what we are going to do is keep this, actually turn this down to like 0.01. Take the anisotropy and we're going to drag it, right? Uh, I'm just looking at which way to go. Uh, take my sun lamp. I need to rotate it more to get it kind of in the shot, basically. And there it is. So you see what happens when I use this anisotropy? It kind of like focuses the light around the light. You get this amazing kind of blowout. Um, and this is just a lot of fun, I find, to play with, especially you get these little rays. What I like to do with this is kind of tuck one off to the side like this. I will put a bit of color into this, why not? It's space, we know what we're going, we know what we're going for. We do some blue and then shift D to duplicate, rotate around and then come over here right and maybe bring this one back to like more of a neutral color 
maybe in a bit of an orange. I know I'm like way ahead of myself. We haven't done materials and I'm already like messing with volume shaders. Hey, but that's how we roll. In Blender, you just have fun. You see where it takes you. All right, so we're going to go back to object. And um, what we're going to do is work on a shader now for these guys. I want the same shader on all of them. So I'm just going to call this material level one. I'm going to go rename it to rock. And I'm going to take these guys and just shift select them all. And then I'm going to grab this little, I'm going to hit minus actually, get rid of that. I'll assign rock because uh, this orange one right here is the last one that I've selected. And that's the one it's going to assign to. But then I'm going to put it on all of these that I have shift selected. So once assigning rock, again, I come right here and I go copy material to selected. And that will put it on each of these guys. So now if I change these values, it's going to change it for all of them. Work out really well. All right, so let's uh, let's go ahead and get some rocky material on this. Uh, let's see, I want to go for a, a noise texture, and I'm going to grab a color ramp, and I'll put this over here, and I'll take the factor and plug it into the factor, and the color, and plug it into the color. Let that load, and I'm going to turn my scale up. You can see we start getting this lovely noise pattern on this rock. I don't know what kind of color this asteroid should be. I mean, I'm kind of guessing like some kind of brownish color. So I might pull my saturation down, vibrancy down a bit. Something like that, maybe. I might bring this one up off black a touch. And again, head towards that kind of brownish red. That looks OK. And I'm going to turn my detail up and my roughness up as well. And that's really going to push things. I'll play with the scale, maybe bring it down a little bit. Now you can get closer as well. I'm kind of doing this all through the camera, um, which probably makes it a bit hard for you to see stream. So I'll, I'll zoom in. <laughs> but uh, anyways, yeah, so I'm just creating this noise. All right, let's create like another layer of noise, uh, maybe like one that's a bit bigger than this. So I'm going to take this noise texture, shift D to duplicate, and grab another color ramp. We'll plug the factor into the factor. And then I'm going to grab a mix RGB node, and we're going to drop this here. And I will take the color output and stick it into the second color there. And then I'm going to switch this to multiply, and I'll crank this up like so. And then I can take the scale down a lot and maybe like drag these in to create a bit of contrast. I don't have to go all the way to one. I can just play with this a little bit. Turn that roughness up some more. It's pretty good. All right, let's add in one more, maybe like either giant cracks or some kind of like crater thing could be cool. I just had a cool idea. I wonder if we could do craters with geometry nodes. Hmm. Let's let's do some let's do some cracks. I think next I'm going to grab a Veroni shader. It's one of my favorite textures. You could do so much with the Veroni. Uh, I'm going to drop this here and I'll duplicate my color ramp. Shift D. Drag these back out so it's just default and I'll plug the distance into factor. Um, and then just so we can have a really clear look at this, I'm going to unplug my base color and I'll plug the color into the emission. Of course, emission is the material property that emits light into your scene. So you can see it's a great way to look at a material or a texture without seeing the effect of shadows or light or anything on the scene. So we can have a look at what this does. You can see these like circular things. And uh, I'm just going to set this from linear. I'm going to switch it to constant. And that'll give it a constant break between black and white. And I can bring this uh, right here and grab a Craig Sorry, I should zoom in so you can see this. I'll um I'll click the plus symbol to create a new pip and I'll just drag this over just so it's on the other side. And you can see we get this sort of like hashed line. That's kind of cool. Like we could do something like this. Just taking the scale up on that. What if we set this back to ease and add in another pip here? These are gonna get really close together. Um make this one black as well, right? So Drop this down. Now we have a bit of fall off on these guys. It might be a little bit nicer. I feel like they're a little too perfect. You know, like these little circles, they're all just a little too perfect. So I feel like what we really need to have is to break these up a bit with some noise. Now, the best way to break up the texture in Blender is to mess with the vector. The vector, what is the vector? The vector is, it's when you're talking about textures, it's how, how Blender places, the texture coordinate is how Blender places a texture on an object surface. And you use the texture coordinate node to do that, right? So let's grab the texture coordinate node. I'm going to drop it here. And then we're going to put some noise into this vector that comes out of the texture coordinate node um, And before we pop it in here. So let's grab a noise texture, drop it here. We'll grab a mix RGB. We'll drop that here. We'll put the factor in here. 
and we'll take the generated. Generated is what it's doing already. So if I can plug that in, it's not going to change. It looks the same. So by plugging this in right here, I'll turn the factor down so we're not doing anything yet. When it's set to zero, basically what's happening is the generated is just coming through here and being passed on through. So nothing's changed. But when we start to increase the factor, it's going to start to mix in this noise. And as it does that, it's going to start to distort these guys a little bit. Now I can increase the scale. You can see them wobbling around. But the higher that scale gets, the more we'll see that distortion in here. And you can see now it looks a lot more natural. It looks a lot more like a, um, you know, a rock that's uh, got some some breakout going on in these circles, which is what we're going for. All right, so let's now mix this in to our other system. Um, so we'll take this, unplug it from the emission, plug this one back into base color, and I'll grab these, just move them out of the way, make a little bit more room. We're going to put another uh, mix RGB node right here. So we're going to go mix RGB, drop this here, and we'll take this one, we'll plug it in there like that. And we're going to switch this up from mix. We're going to go to add, I think, because we those were white values in that. So we'll add them into this uh, and we'll see what this looks like. I might just have to back it off a little bit because if we invert this and multiply. So let's try that. I'm going to go multiply and then I'm going to grab an invert node. I'm going to stick it right here. Splinter catches up, although that looks kind of cool. That looks pretty rad. Yeah, I think it looks good. All right, let's use Let's go with that. I'm going to plug this now as a bump. I'm going to take this whole thing that we just made uh, and we're going to turn it into grayscale and use it as a bump node. So a bit more room and I need to grab a bump node and I'm going to take the color of this and we'll just plug it in the height and we'll take the normal and we'll plug it into the normal. So what's this doing? It's taking the color information from this crazy texture that we just made and it looks at all the light and dark values. So black and it turns it into black and white and then it looks wherever things are really white, it's going to shade it, the lighting is going to shade as if it's um, a really high surface. And if it's black, it's going to shade as if it's a really low surface. So you get this texture. This looks like we've got this sort of micro displacement going on on our object. I think it looks really neat. Look at that. It's really nice. All right, let's do this. Let's do this. I'm going to go to uh, geometry nodes. And let's actually, we're going to swap our view. I'm going to do that. And I'm going to pull this one up and make this one geometry nodes, just like working in geometry nodes where it's wide like this. Okay, we're going to zoom in on one area, kind of keep it focused. All right, let's see if we pull this off. I'm going to click on my crater. Good. I've got it. Isosphere. Perfect. Click new to create a new geometry node. So we're going to call this crater. It's going to be our procedural crater generator. Yeah. Okay. So what we're going to do now is let's go ahead and create a, I'm going to go shift a, we're going to create a normal node. We're going to need that. We're going to need a set position node, and we're going to drop this here. We are going to need a Veroni texture, which is what we we're using before to make those cool crater shapes. We're going to need a color ramp so we can control the Veroni texture a little bit. And we're going to need a vector math node. And um, we should be able to do it with all of this stuff here. In fact, we might need one more vector math node. And let's make a little bit of room here and start hooking all this stuff up. Okay, so what we want to do, the uh, set position node, what it does is it takes all the, the vertexes in our mesh and it can offset their position in any direction we want. So what we're doing is we're taking the normal and we're going to multiply the normal, which is the direction that the face is pointing in, by some noise. So basically the noise is going to make those normals really long or really short, but it's going to keep them pointed in the direction that they need to be pointing. Uh, if I go to here, I can turn on normals so we can see them. Drag this side. There we go. So these blue lines, these are the normals. You can see they're like pointing in the direction that the face is sort of angled. So it's which way is the face pointing? That's a normal. So let's take that and we're going to plug the distance of this Veroni into the color ramp. And I'm going to bring this down. We don't want this to be white. White's going to be way too strong. So I'm going to bring this right down to something low like 0 0.015 on the value there. And we're going to take this color and we're going to plug it uh, actually into the second one. It doesn't really matter, to be honest. Set this to multiply and multiply the normal. So if we can just plug this in here, you can see it's going to start to work. And um, we can change the scale a little bit of our noise and we can drag this around. You see something's happening, um, but not quite sure what yet. So yeah, let's get rid of that vector math node. We're just going to go shift A. We're going to go for a normal math node. And we'll drop this here and we're going to set this to multiply and we're going to make this negative one. And this is going to make the values go in as opposed to out, right? So now if I increase the brightness of this, it's going to affect it more and more. And we can get 
something that looks really, really cool. So let's play around with this. I'm going to set this scale to three, I think, and like bring up the black value and just play with these until uh, we get something that feels really interesting. Now, I might need a little bit more mesh to get this to start to look even better. So we can come over to the subdivision service that happens before the geometry nodes. We can turn it up. So you can just turn it up by one. You can see we get way more detail. Um, and that will give me a little bit more control over how all this is going to work. Let's try flipping these around. So I'll put the light one first and then the dark one. And there we go. Now we can see we're getting like a crater. Awesome. That looks really, really neat. Now to put this on the other asteroids, it's going to be very simple. We just click on them and then uh, we can just come right over here and click new and then select the crater. Uh, and then we need to turn up the subdivision surface. Make sure you're doing it for the render as well. So these happen differently. So when you hit render at the end, it's going to use this number, whereas in the viewport, it's using this number. And it's just like that so that you can have like a lower number while you're working. So it's a bit faster. Come over here, click new, grab crater again, come to subdivision surface, turn that up for both of those. And we'll take this one as well. And we're going to click new and we're going to grab crater and we'll turn up the subdivision surface. All right, let's put a little bit more love into this material. So I'm going to head back over to my shader editor and uh, I want this thing to start having an appropriate surface. So right now it's, it's um, let's drag the roughness up, I think, because we want it to be like really rocky. I don't think it's going to have a low roughness. Roughness allows for reflection. So if I bring this down, you can see it's going to start to get really specular and pinpricky. Now that might be nice in some ways because it does kind of create this like ice look to it. I do kind of like that now that I'm seeing it. Uh, this makes more sense because we're saying it's super rough, but I just, I just, I don't know. We've got so much texture going on. It really brings it out. Uh, we could dull the specular maybe so it's not so intense. Pull that off a little bit. Gosh, these craters look great. Look at that. Look at that. This is so cool. This is so cool. Oh, that's really cool. Look at that. That's so cool. How could you not love Blender? Take this one and change the mid-level as well, because that was looking really nice. Just punching that out, maybe scaling it down. Very cool surfacing. It's gonna be, it's gonna be really fun, I think, to fly a camera into this, to find places to put like a station entrance and stuff. Like building one in here is gonna be kind of cool. Like we should put a few more asteroids in the space, you know? Like what happens if we take this? Shift D, duplicate, scale down, grab X. Do need to expand my draw distance on this camera. It's a bit too shallow. Come to the camera tab, go right here to clip start end, and I'll take the end up by adding another zero. Just a couple of these around here, maybe. Don't know if I need the geometry nodes on these or all the subdivisions. I might turn the subdivisions down so I end up with too much stuff. Shift D, duplicate, just placing these finding cool spots for them, moving them out and the X as well so that we've got different planes of movement. So you see as I move around, you can see how far away these things are. That one looks like it needs to be a bit, a bit rougher. Uh, so I might click on this one. One thing you can do is you can come to like the material editor and we can increase this rock and we can call this one rock far. And with rock far, what I can do is come up to my bump and I can turn up my distance. So rock far is now a totally different material and it's just assigned to this. I turn my distance up on the bump. It's going to get really, really bumpy and uh, that will make it look a bit better from a distance. So you see this one's closer to us and it doesn't look good. Whereas this one looks really nice. And we might want to plan it off the distance as well. Uh, so let's go shift A. We're going to create a UV sphere. Where's the UV sphere? There it is. Um, I'm going to make it huge, like bigger than everything. And then grab X and push it way out. Not too far out. I've lost it. Grab X, push it out there. Grab X. And I might bring it in a little bit and scale it down. Click new to put a new material on it. We're going to switch this from principal DS to uh, an emission shader and we'll turn the strength up and we'll give it like a really bright orange color. I like kind of, I usually like tucking a sun if I'm going to have one kind of behind stuff like this. And it looks nice. 
not too much because you want to like overpower the shot. Maybe we should have dual suns. Like that. Change this one to like a like that. And then with the second one, we can have a different sun color. More of a red. Thanks so much for watching this tutorial. I hope you really enjoyed it. Learned a lot of cool tips and tricks. We're gonna be pushing this thing further in the next episode. We're gonna start adding to add in the, the base itself, some structure and some really cool things. Eventually we'll be animating the camera and the ships and we're gonna do so many cool things to this shot. Hope you're very excited. Stay tuned. Now, if you like this tutorial, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Thanks so much for watching. I hope to catch you in the next one. Until then, have a fantastic week. See you later. Bye.